We're out here in New Caney today at in, uh, Precinct 4 at Council Hayden's office here with some of the New Caney DPS troopers and Splendora PD. And we want to let everybody know in East County, these guys are out. They are out looking for drunk drivers. They are out looking for drug drivers. They are making a large number of arrests every single weekend. So if you're going to get drunk and get behind the wheel, they're going to catch you. If you're going to get drugged and get behind the wheel, they're going to catch you. You need to make smart decisions and not put yourself in that situation. Brad, you want to? Thank you. Um, we're just trying to bring some awareness to the DWI issues we're having, uh, whether it be the pandemic being over and people are getting out, um, getting more active. It's summer vacation. Um, families are taking vacations with their and, and going with their families. Um, we want to just urge people to be safe. Uh, choose a designated driver if you drink. Um, like Tyler said, we're, we're working. We're out there working on the streets. We have a DWI task force. Um, the numbers are up. Uh, DWIs are happening. And we want people to be aware that um, they need to make good choices. What kind of ratios are y'all seeing between first-time offenders and repeat offenders for DWIs? I can tell you the most recent numbers here. I have them on my phone for just arrests this month. So the vast majority of arrests, usually at least half. For, so for June, we've had 108 DWI arrests. 56 of those are DWI first. Can I actually compare our I'm sorry, let me add that up. 62, 70 of the arrests are ones that would be a DWI first offender, including where folks have a BAC of 0.15 or higher, which is charged differently, or um, folks that have an open container, which also is slightly charged differently. So we're looking at 70% essentially right there of the arrests just in June are first time offenders. And the repeat offenders are less. The problem with the repeat offenders is though, they don't just often get their second. They get their third, sometimes they get a fourth. You know, as long, I remember back um, several years ago, there was a guy that our office prosecuted that had 16 priors. Um, Constable Hayden and I were just talking about a guy who struck his son um, several years ago who was on, he was on parole for his eighth DWI. And this was his ninth when he crashed into Constable Hayden's son who was just on his way home from work. And Jessica, we talk about quite a bit in Montgomery County, 60% of Montgomery County's population has lived here for less than 10 years. It means that Montgomery County is a growth, uh, growth county, growth opportunities. Everybody knows that Montgomery County is one of the fastest growing counties, not only in the great state of Texas, but in the United States. What people don't know, though, of that part is that East Montgomery County is the fastest growing area. So when you have this kind of growth, you have these type of opportunities also. And so you have new open roadways, you have a new uh, population. When Andrew refers to the fact that most of these are first-time offenders, it's the first time that they've ever been caught. We know that all the studies say that the first time you got caught is probably the 10th, 12th, or 15th time that you've actually driven while you've been impaired or you've been intoxicated. So we all know there's a sense of euphoria that we have with people coming out of the COVID restrictions in general, but specifically over here in East Montgomery County, there's a feeling of growth, there's a feeling of explosiveness, and it feeds into the fact that people kind of feel unfettered, that it's, that it's the summer. It's not only the summer for teenagers, but adults feel the same way, and they don't feel the same constraints that perhaps they should. The law is still there, and as the, uh, as the county continues to grow in population, law enforcement continues to grow as well. The response is more aggressive, the investigation is more aggressive, and the prosecution is certainly more aggressive. Our goal is to keep Montgomery County safe. Our goal is not to stop people from having a good time. But with that said, when you conflate you're having a good time and endangering the population of East Montgomery County, it's the Sheriff's Department, it's the Constable's Department, it's the Tech Department of Public Safety, it's uh, Splendora PD, Wood Forest, it's all these agencies over here that are clamping down. We want our people to be safe. That's what this is really all about. It's getting that message out there. We're very clear. We advertise. We tell people, hey, we're doing no refusal. Not only do we tell them when we're doing no refusal, but we tell them where we're doing no refusal. At that point, if you don't take those hints, right, mm -hmm. then there, is, there are no apologies on behalf of the DA's office. We're not asking people to follow the law. We're going to enforce the law.
-hmm. And unfortunately, there, those consequences are going to be suffered, and whether they're pilots, whether they're doctors, or what have you, they know when they take their lives into their own hands or the lives of their citizens that there's going to be consequences. Mm -hmm. Now, you have these no, I know the DEA works with all law enforcement to do these no refusal operations, but Rowdy, you also have done a DWI enforcement division that exclusively works to find these w DWIs. Have you seen a marked increase in the number of DWIs overall this year, and what do you think is fueling that? We have seen a slight increase in DWI arrests in the department, and um, I, I don't know if it's because the pandemic's over and people are getting out and people are, you know, are, are feeling more um, comfortable. And um, if, if that's the reason, and they, they've just forgotten about the, um, the the consequences of DWIs, and, and that they can get an Uber or a designated driver. Mm -hmm. Yes, I can tell you from Memorial Day weekend, the vast majority of the DWI arrests were done by Precinct 4 mm -hmm. out here in East County. Mm -hmm. And I know Constable Hayden's office has been doing a great job of making sure that they are catching intoxicated and drunk drivers. Um, DPS, Trooper Wilson here is uh, on behalf of the New County DPS troopers. These gentlemen and ladies that work for them do a phenomenal job with DWI enforcement. But because they're a state agency right now, some of them are being rotated down to the border for that. So mm -hmm. Precinct 4, Splendora PD, the Sheriff's Department have all been stepping up to help meet the need of the troopers not all being here by continuing to do a great job making arrests and trying to keep our streets safe. Mm -hmm. Anecdotally, my impression is when you add more law enforcement, there are some crimes that are more detectable with more law enforcement. DWI happens to be one of those. We found the same thing with internet crimes against children. We told, uh, tried to tell the public, hey, it's not as if Montgomery County is the uh, the black hole for child pornography. The fact is we have the resources that we use to investigate, detect, and prosecute it. I think what you're seeing the same thing, the more that you have law enforcement in Montgomery County focusing on DWI arrests and detentions, you're going to see more arrests and detentions. So you've got Constable Hayden, who with his DWI, um, not his task force, but his DWI operations, DPS is consistently um, on the roadways and the, the traffic. And so that's where you catch the majority of your DWIs. So if you deploy the resources as Precinct 4 has, as, um, as Department of Public Safety have, you're going to discover it because it's out there, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And so as long as you have bars and as long as you have people uh, that are willing to drive back and forth intoxicated, all you have to have is law enforcement presence to detect it and you're going to find it. With regard to the prosecution of DWIs, you said it yourself that there are, you had one guy who had nine or eight previous DWIs. What can y'all do to keep them off the streets? I mean, at that point. So it's a, it's a collaborative effort. I, I, 13 years ago, I thought, okay, you know, I can stop the scourge of DWIs all by myself as the elected DA by, by educating the public and by letting people know how aggressive we were going to be on prosecution. And I learned very quickly that no man is an island unto himself. Without the additional efforts of law enforcement getting into it, we're countywide, but it's really in the precincts and, and, the, uh, and the, the jurisdictions where individually they start to hear the same message over and over and over. I assure you, if Precinct 4 was not as aggressive, if Precinct 4 said, you know what, our priority is going to be a cause for service as opposed to traffic safety issues, then people would feel that and they would start to drive more intoxicated. And you see it in areas and cities where the uh, presence is not as aggressive, right? Um, so we can do what we can do within the courts and, uh, you know, we're limited by what the state legislatures say. Um, we're also limited by what the courts will allow us to do. And so you're looking at license suspensions. Of course, somebody can still drive a car even on a license suspension, and we'll see those offenses. Um, we can do probationary type things where you're trying to tell somebody, hey, look, there's long-term consequences here. There's financial consequences here. Uh, you can have a blow and go installed upon your vehicle. That is a huge uh, deterrent because at that point, either you have to do it uh, lawfully and faithfully, you have to provide a sample of your breath to make your car continue to travel, or you got to continue to be a uh, you got to continue to be a, a no good citizen. You put your kid up there on the blow and go device. So of course, law enforcement has responded. Now there's a video of every time you blow into your vehicle. And so, uh, you know, it, it's always a, a, a game of hide and seek when you're dealing with people that are just bound and determined to be criminals. I've tried to tell people, I'm not here to stop you from being an alcoholic. I understand the demon of alcoholism. I think every family in, uh, in the United States has had somebody who's been 
uh, dealt that card, we understand uh, addiction. With that said, being an addict and being a drunkard has nothing to do with driving, which is why we continue to punish the conflation of those two. If you're going to be a drunk, stay at home and be a drunk. Get somebody to bring you the alcohol. I understand. I will see you at church on Sundays and I'll pray for you. On the other hand, don't get caught driving in my county. Mm -hmm. Are y'all seeing any other kinds of offenses at the same time when you pull them over for DWI? Are they driving without a license, you know, no insurance, that kind of thing? What are you? So one common thing we see is um, somebody will have a handgun license and they're driving with a, with a handgun. And when they commit a crime with that, while they have the handgun with them, it, it's unlawful carrying of a weapon. So then if that, that crime is attached to it, uh, we've seen uh, numerous drug offenses attached to the DWIs. Um, a common one is DWI, FMFR, and uh, no DL. And so you'll see a, um, you'll see a license, driving on a suspended license, fair to maintain financial responsibility, and a DWI. Because if somebody has a prior, right, and it typically goes, somebody who is, um, doesn't take responsibility about a lot of things are people who don't want to follow the rules. They don't want to follow a lot of rules. They don't want to have their cars, uh, they don't want to have registration and inspection done on their vehicle. And so you'll see uh, license violations, registration inspections, DWIs and FMFRs, and it's almost always the unholy trinity when you get a DWI. Like the, like the DA said too, it's not just DWI, it's driving under the influence of a drug um, it can be the same consequences. Um, and there's certain things that can cause a DWI to be a higher charge. Uh, yeah. If you want to talk about having a child in the vehicle yeah. and a handgun. I was, I was going to say as well, any, the definition of intoxicated in Texas law is really any substance that you ingest that causes you to not have your normal mental or physical faculties. Or, including alcohol, an alcohol concentration of 0.08 or more. You can be intoxicated and you should not be driving a vehicle with a blood alcohol concentration less than 0.08. Most folks, according to studies, are impaired are legally intoxicated at a 0.05 or so, but any type of drug. So it's common, we talk about arrests for folks who are drug drivers, who uh, are also in possession of various drugs. If you have never been arrested for DWI before and you have a child younger than 15 in the car with you as a passenger, that's automatically a state jail felony offense. Meaning six months to two years in a state jail, up to five years probation, a felony conviction. I mean, that's, People need to remember that and, and think about that too. Like, one, you shouldn't be getting drunk or being drugged and getting behind the wheel, but certainly it makes it even worse if you have kids in the car. And Jessica responded to your question earlier about some of these repeat offenders. What can we do? And kind of building on what Mr. Liggins said here, it gets to a point to where what we have to do is separate someone from society because they can't separate their disease of their their um, alcoholism from endangering others. So the gentleman that, and I use that term loosely, that struck Mr. Hay, uh, Constable Hayden's son, he got sentenced to life in prison for his DWI. The guy that had 16 got a 99 year sentence. And these are from Montgomery County judges and juries. So we do everything on our behalf as law enforcement to make sure that we can build those cases in these situations and that we can get the appropriate sentence and justice on that case to make sure that that person can't get on our roadways again and can't put someone's life in danger and can't take somebody's life. Brett or Andrew, get that blood's gonna be taken, it's gonna be sent to the lab and analyzed. If somebody refuses, then the law says we need to get a search warrant. So the no refusal program has an additional prosecutor working besides the prosecutor that's working 24 hour intake for our office. It's got additional people working to where that prosecutor is gonna help that officer write up a search warrant affidavit and they're gonna send it to whichever judge is up next in the judge rotation, because our judges in Montgomery County, they're all on call 24 seven. They're all expecting their phone to ring and they answer them and they review the warrant, they sign off on it. We now have a court order saying you can't refuse anymore, we're going to take your blood. And so we're getting that blood typically within less than two hours of the person being pulled over. That's good, powerful after the testing to show that that person's intoxicated and to corroborate what the officer sees. So folks can choose to refuse all they want, but we're still gonna get that evidence. And just to be clear, you'll be doing these no refusal operations every weekend this summer? We do it every single weekend of every single weekend. Every, sorry, every single weekend we do no refusal. But we want to make sure that the public is remembering that and getting the message out and not forgetting that this is going on and we want folks to be safe this summer. Between Memorial Day and Labor Day is what we refer to as the 100 deadliest days of summer. 
we want people being safe this summer when there's more folks on the roadway, when folks are enjoying vacations, when we have people coming to Montgomery County and people that live here in Montgomery County going to other places on our roadways. We want them to be safe. We don't want drunk drivers. We don't want drug drivers making our county dangerous and injuring people and taking people's lives. Yeah, and I think to conclude, um, to conclude this without uh, taking away from Rowdy, it's really about the 100 most dangerous days, and that's what we're continuing to try to get the message out there. We're in this fatal funnel right now. We know that these 100 days, when it started Memorial Day, that the activity, the days get longer, the activity gets greater. The hot summer days, of course, we're in the state of Texas, right? And people think, okay, it's great to quench your thirst. And I say to all those things, great, stay at home, barbecue, drink your beer, and everything else. Just don't get on the roadways. We want a safe community in Montgomery County. Um, you know, we need our people to be here. We need them going to church. We need them going to grocery stores. We need them getting up and going to work. What we don't need are more accidents and more fatalities. So th that's really the gist of what we're trying to get out here. These hundred days is why we're going to continue to publicize being in this fatal funnel at this fatal time that we all know within law enforcement, it's a tragedy awaiting. I used to believe that if I could pre predict it, I could prevent it. And unfortunately, experience tells me that just because I can predict when the fatalities are going to increase, it doesn't mean that I can prevent it because I can't tell individually who's going to do it. If I could, uh, I'd be, uh, I'd have a longer white flowing uh, beard than the one I already have. So thank y'all for coming. We appreciate it, mm -hmm. Constable Hayden. Uh, on behalf of everything that you do, uh, and behalf of everything Department of Public Safety does, uh, the DA's office uh, it always appreciates your efforts. Uh, we like great cases, uh, and we just want the community to stay safe. Thank you.